1949, I started having night blindness. Uh, I had 20-20 vision. And when I'd be driving and oncoming cars would come, they'd go by, well, I couldn't see. the doctor and he examined my eyes real close several times. Pigmentary changes that occur in the peripheral retina gave the disease its name. He said, Joanne, I'm going to go have to tend to something. Scope line. And he called my daddy. I spent the day there with all kinds of tests. The rod and cone cells in the retina degenerate. The doc called us in his office. The earliest symptom is night blindness. The next is tunnel vision. He told me that I had retinitis pigmentosum. I didn't need to be having any more children, and I didn't need to be driving anymore. And that was that. So I went home and had to tell my husband to give him his freedom so he could have what he wanted. And he cried. Tears were rolling down his cheeks. He said, uh, he said, Joe, I don't ever want to hear you say that. All those years and we ended up having four daughters. The way this array works is that it is placed on the surface of the retina, on the inner surface of the retina, on the inside of the eye. The array really does not have any direct effect on the rod and cone cells. In retinitis pigmentosa, the rod and cone cells are completely degenerated. So what we're doing with the array is we're stimulating areas of the retina that are downstream from the rod and cone cells. Specifically, we're stimulating a layer called the ganglion cell layer, and they form the optic nerves and directly sends impulses to the brain. Seven of micro. I would like to be able to see all of my children. My grandchildren. Just love to see the beauty of nature. However people talk to me about what they see in, in some areas I can picture it in my mind because I've been so blessed to be able to see it one time. <laughs> 